Welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations on how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Business Coach. Hi, everyone. It's Liz here, Soria, your host of the Tax Advisor and Business Coach Success Podcast. As usual, I love bringing really, really good experts into my show. And, you know, I, I it just amazes me how much content and information we can really have um, to help everyone out there, especially our, you know, entrepreneurs. And today I have a gentleman by the name of Fred Stubick. He is actually a very impressive background. So I'm just going to go very briefly because I'm going to let the rest for him to kind of introduce himself completely. So um, he has a very diverse background. Let's start with that. Um, not only he has been into sports from football to uh, basketball. Is that right, uh, uh, Fred? And uh, everything. And in most impressively for me, and I think for as an American, I've been born here in the U.S. too, in the Big Apple. I'm very proud of it. Um, he graduated from the Naval uh, uh, as an officer. And the first one, I want to say thank you for serving our country, um, uh, Fred, because I'm always very grateful for everyone who has my uh, invest, invested so much time in, in their part of their life for, for this country. So thank you. And no further ado, uh, welcome. And we're going to discuss our topic today. It's going to be about developing a mindset and a habit for success. So Fred, welcome to the show, and tell okay. us a little bit about your background, please, a little more in depth, please. Okay, well, I was born in West Virginia, and I was raised in southwestern Pennsylvania, you know, very active in the sports thing. Uh, we had four seasons there, football, basketball, baseball, and track. Uh, and after high school, I was fortunate to have some offers to uh, – play football at different schools, and I decided I wanted to go to the Naval Academy and serve my country. So I yeah. attended the Naval Academy. I lettered a quarterback for three years and then was commissioned. I served for five years and then transitioned to the civilian world. In the civilian world, I had a mix of uh, different uh, duties. I was both in the private and public sector. I had been through the IPO process bought companies, sold companies, certainly had my share of, you know, adversity, but I've also had my share of uh, upside too. But, uh, you know, one doesn't come without the other. I agree. And I've, I've traveled extensively too. I have over 5 million frequent flyer miles. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've uh, a lot of international experience. I mean, I think to the point where I have two sons and one's in, one's in Berlin and one's in Japan right now. Going to, going to graduate school. Awesome. That is awesome. Wow. Uh, I guess it was their choice in, in that matter, but, uh, you know, interesting, yeah, because you got your education here in the States, correct? Oh, oh, correct, yeah, but I traveled so much, I should take my family with them. And by the time each of them had been 10 years old, they had been to Europe or wherever 8 to 10 to 12 times. And as a result, they uh, saw other things that interested as a parent or as a manager, or as a boss, one of the things you have to do is to take, just to give your children or your employees the wherewithal to succeed and fulfill their dreams. And that's what I was trying to do. Interesting. So again, you really have a very diverse, you know, diverse background. And, and, and Fred, tell us a little bit about, you know, what really uh, made you go into writing your first book because your book is a very interesting book it's something that i think is worth discussing uh during uh you know our chat here um and and it's it's if i'm not mistaken it's called it starts with you and Correct. and it goes into a lot of strategies and uh things that you're sharing uh with the rest of people to help them to see um in how to develop a mindset because sometimes i think that um as professionals, we can have a career, right? Mm -hmm. And we can go to college and we can have a university title and, and I don't care if you go as far as a PhD, whatever it is, but why is it sometimes we feel there's some, ch there's some sort of difference between people who are very high intellectual 
and they mm -hmm. have high degrees, but yet for some reason they're not successful when it's when they start their own business. Share a little bit with us if you don't mind some of your techniques. We appreciate that. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things that's most important is to have a well-rounded set of skills. And I, I address that in, in the book. I, I grouped it into three parts, and each part has five attributes or skill sets that I think are important. And if someone's going to be successful, okay, it's just like anything else that you do. You have to be good at it across a broader spectrum. Okay, for example, uh, you could be the brightest person in the world, but if, you, if you're very introverted and you cannot get your point across, you're going to have a hard time with your messaging. Uh, if you're not comfortable working around people or being out in public and you're in a position that requires an extroverted approach and you're an introvert, then you need to get the training and develop those skills. And if you can't, then you need to do something else. But what I've laid out in the book is that the that your success is predicated on your mindset and the habits because what you think and how you act defines you as a person. Now that encompasses a, a whole range of issues. Yes. Uh, I talk about having, you have to have that firm belief in what you're doing. You have to have a good fit. I think one of the things we see today, Liz, is that just, be, I think sometimes people, young people maybe or for, for whatever reason, peer pressure, parents, whatever, are doing something that they don't particularly believe in, okay? And it may not be a good fit, and that's a mismatch. So you, 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 ne you need to have a proper fit. And there's a whole host of other skills that I get into in my last part of my book. I, I talk about adversity and failure. And, you know, those are both learning experiences, and some people just aren't equipped to handle adversity and failure. Now, that doesn't mean you cannot handle it, okay? Right. Uh, because just like with anything else, they talk about leadership, for example. Are leaders born or made? Well, I believe leaders are made because if they were born, then there would be no further discussion on the point. When you go to the hospital, there'd be a little tag that says, this is a leader. So it, it's something that is the sum total of your experiences, et cetera. But, you know, your mindset is very important. I mean, for example, Liz, how that's many times... Point. Thanks for sharing that because it's not... Well, you said that's a very good point for audience to understand that because some people do believe that you have to be born a certain way with certain things. Yes, I think that by nature we have... Uh, a tendency of being good in some things and a little bit weaker in other things, but it doesn't mean that you cannot train yourself to be better in a specific thing that you want to do in life. So I appreciate you sharing that. I really do. Yeah, well, I mean, for example, they, they talk about so-and-so is a natural athlete, and, and all they see is the person out on whatever playing field. But what they don't see is that this person spent hours and hours practicing they don't see the dedication, the hard work, the commitment. And there are no shortcuts to success, none whatsoever. So if you think you're just going to wing it because of the strength of your personality or your skill set, uh, not necessarily. No, you won't. You have to develop those skills. And if you're committed to develop those skills and develop the right mindset, that is certainly a step in the right direction. You mentioned, uh, Liz, something which is very intriguing to me is uh, – Nature versus nurture. I don't know if you've read the book by Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers, but no, he goes no. he, he he goes into success and he analyzed different different like the Canadian hockey team. He 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 looked at musicians. He he looked at several vocations, okay. and he referenced the study at I think it was the Enders Music Academy or something, and it was actually in Berlin, Germany, but found that the common element in all of this was hard work. So, you know, you, you take nature versus nurture and, you know, oftentimes the environment and the nurture will win. And as an example in his book, uh, it, it kind of struck me. He visited a farmer and the farmer was, I don't know if it's Iowa or Indiana or wherever it was, but this person had an IQ uh, that was off the charts. And by definition, this person should have been uber successful, but he just did not have the develop the other skills that was needed that were needed 
And that's very interesting because, again, even though we might do the best we can about improving ourselves through a career, it's a combination. I call success as a, not a single ingredient. It's a multiple combination of things. And when we try to develop a side and we notice that we are still weak on it, then we need to concentrate on our strength and mm -hmm. let the weakness hire someone else who can help us on the weakness and maybe they can help us succeed through that side. So in your book goes kind of deep into, uh, you know, tactics and things that people can, can, can utilize. Um, you come from like, yeah, a, a very strong, solid background. And I think anyone that the case to go, uh, you know, in the military service, uh, especially in a young age, um, you know, myself, I'm very honored. My nephew who just recently joined the national guard. So mm -hmm. I'm very proud of him for doing that and serving the country too. And I share this because I think that uh, there's something about, um, you know, the military that I think that just gives you a very solid, um, grounded uh, background, you know, of strength for, for, for a human being. Um, and I think that's probably one of your assets that you got from, from serving, you know, in the Naval. Um, it brought it into the civil, you know, side of the business. Um, how that's, much? That's, that's, Go that's ahead. a good point. No, that's no, that's a good point. I've always, you know, Liz, I've always felt that the military and sports, for that matter, are excellent training grounds for life. Why? Well, first of all, you're working together as a team. You have to practice. You're working for a common goal. Now, you practice. You drill. You practice. You scrimmage. Whatever. But you're doing something repeatedly. Okay, with everyone moving towards a common goal to be. and the habits to perform at the highest level possible. Now, isn't that what business is? Sure. Okay, working with a group of people, common objective in the best manner possible, you know, focusing in you know, those people who are working in the right areas that have the right skills, matching them up, et cetera. And that's another point you brought up, Liz, is, uh, you need to have a good balance with the people that you work with, uh, the chemistry. Uh, you know, most problems, there's a saying, business is simple, people are complex. Most problems, most problems, there's, there's a saying that says, business is simple, okay, people are complex. And as I mentioned, most problems are rooted in human dynamics. You know, as a result, it's very important to pick the right people to work with there has to be good chemistry and good balance you don't want all of the same people uh with the same skill sets with the same personalities working together so if you're an entrepreneur or a, st or a startup make sure you look at the respective skill sets of everybody they should complement each other when i say complement that doesn't mean great job although you should do that it means that their skill sets should be additive and the sum total should be a pretty powerful combination and there also has to be good chemistry and good trust because it's one thing to to run a company or to start up a business and for things to go well. But as we all know, sometimes things don't go well. And so when you have a good team and you have a strong belief in what you are about and what you're doing, it's going to help you weather the storm and the challenges that will certainly be ahead of you. You know, that's how I always say, there's always going to be obstacles. Um, always. Always going to be circumstances that are beyond your control. I mean, it's just part of life. And, and, and like I said, I have learned uh, in the last nine years that I, you know, been pretty much running my business, it's been challenging. I, I admit it. Um, just because, again, just because I have a career, I, I have a degree, I have all these credentials, doesn't mean that I was going to be successful coming out in the first year and say, hey, you know, I, I started my company and, you know, it's going to be wonderful. I think it's a process as we learn as we go. And I think the experience is nothing more, and from my personal perspective, I think it's nothing more than trial and error. That's how you really acquire mm -hmm. experience. And I believe in devoting my time in what I'm good in, my strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, now waste my time and my weakness because normally you hear that most of the time. Have you noticed that, uh, Fred? Mm -hmm. I might, you might agree, disagree with me, sir. But you hear that where they tell you, okay, you need to get better on your weakness. 
why would I want to put my time on the weakness, put in my strength, and let hire other people where I'm not good in, they can help me to succeed. And like you say, having a good team, build a good inner circle, that's what I think is. That, that's, that's why you need that balance. And, and if somebody's doing something that, and they're trying to work on it, or you want to work on your weaknesses, no doubt, but you want to do something that you believe in. If you, if you have confidence in yourself and confidence in your mission or your job or, or your new business plan, okay, that's going to be extremely helpful. And you also have to have that a good fit. Okay, when I say a good fit, you have to be a good fit for what you're doing. Absolutely. Now, what is a good fit? A good fit is something that you are, that you're good at, that you enjoy. Yes. And that you can do well. You and enjoy. The, That's a good, good uh, word. I like that. Let me show that. <laughs> you, know, you, you have to because you're going to work every day or most of the days of the week. You spend a lot of your time at work. And if you don't like what you're doing at work, there is a, it carries over to other parts of life, such as it could carry over to a personal life and it could affect your relationships in, you know, whatever way, or it could culminate in some other issues. You might, you know, you might start doing certain things you don't, you shouldn't be doing. You might start drinking too much or whatever, but, but in any event, you have to have a good fit for what you're doing. Now, if you have, if you can develop that skill set, that's great. But if you can't, Okay, or if this is something that you're not really that good at, right. you have to be aware of your limitations and adjust your efforts accordingly. And if you're in a larger company and you're someone who's real good at sales, and there's another person that's really good with the technical presentations, well, you don't go in there and give the technical presentation. Okay, you let the technical person handle it and you handle the sales aspects of things. That's a very good point. Yeah, and I, and I fully agree with you on that, Fred. And um, you know, one of the things that I, I believe that your book mentions besides kind of smaller tactics and how to develop our, uh, our mind, mindset, how necessary is really to have habits? Why are they so necessary? And how often do we have to make this into like a daily routine to get better into our habits and kind of let our brain suck in that mindset that this is how we need to do things? Versus to mm -hmm. how we've done things in the past. Uh, I mean, how necessary, in, and if you don't mind sharing with us a little bit, you know, your expertise, please. Um, what kind of things people can do now? I mean, just to kind of get into a habit of understanding how they need to do certain things to, to, to improve, uh, you know, their, their, their success mindset to be, you know, more prosperous in, in, in running their business. That, that's a very good point, Liz. I mean, I, I think the first thing you, is you have to have goals. Okay, because if, if you don't have a goal and don't know where you're going, you know, any road will take you there. Sure. So you have to have goals that match up with, as I mentioned, the belief and the fit and all that. But that goal, the goals, and let me back up. You need to have a personal strategy. The personal strategy should uh, encompass your professional goals, your personal goals. And the third one is your fitness goals. A fitness goal should never be optional because it all balances things out. Now, when, yeah, and when you put that, you should, you should put a plan together. You, you have to have goals. You know, one of the things I asked someone, five years from now, if you're doing the same thing, would you be happy? And then the answer is no, what are you gonna do about it? So you, you develop a plan. Now, you, one of the things that people do is they set themselves up for failure by putting together an unrealistic plan with unrealistic goals. Okay, start small, take a few steps at a time. Now, old Chinese proverb, the journey of a thousand miles begins with that first step. You know, it, take that first step, okay? And then after that first step, you'll take another and another. And eventually, you will get to the point where you will be achieving one goal after another, you get in action mode and uh, you're on your way. But you have to put them in writing, review them, be disciplined about it, follow them, and ditch the excuses. Wow, excuses. Don't we come up with a lot of excuses, don't we, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We We're do. so good about that. I think, and I, and I include myself, I speak for myself. And, and that's something that I have to kind of break that habit because 
Um, you said physical. I mean, this is important, and I, I have discussed this in other episodes, even with you know some doctors that specialize in physical, you know, um, exercise. And I think we, it's, it's a combination. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. only our mind. Physically, we need to be active. We need to be healthy. We need to eat a nutrition food. It's all a complete combination. Um, but going back to the mindset, I like that part that you share with us uh, about being able to set a goal. And even mm-hmm. if it's small, because I think sometimes, even if it might be very small, it might fall in kind of um, uh, too small to believe, we can reach that easier. And then mm-hmm. when you reach the first goal, maybe you can reach the second goal and the third goal, and you keep going up the ladder, and that's what matters, correct? Correct. And, and what also matters is sometimes you don't achieve those goals, and you have to adapt as necessary. Now, and, and sometimes there'll be failure. Well, I mean, if you try something and it works out, that's great. But if you try something and it doesn't work out, that's a learning experience. Don't dwell on it, okay? Don't, and, and get all the negative stuff out of your head, learn from it and move on because you have to continue to move forward and persevere. But it's those little things that you do, one thing after another over a sustained period of time that will enable you to reach your goals. And it's also important too that uh, I mentioned that you have to associate with, uh, with good people, uh, with, the, with the right people. And sometimes you get caught up with a group of people who like the status quo. They don't want things to be changed. Yeah. And the only thing constant in life is change. And if they see you going to school trying to make yourself better and you don't have time for them, it sometimes is, becomes very disconcerting to those individuals and they might push back on you. Sure. Well, in that instance, you know, I would maybe find a different group of friends, so to speak, because they should be happy for you that you're trying to get better and trying to improve yourself. And you know, the, the other thing is, as, as, as you're doing this, I go back to the positive mindset again. I mean, Liz, how many times have you walked into some place? You, you've thought about it. You're prepared. You say, I got this. Uh-huh. But what happened? It usually works out. Now, if you go in and you're, 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 you're thinking all these negative thoughts, you're very concerned about you haven't prepared properly. For example, like a test. If you haven't studied and prepared, right. you're not going to do very well. So your planning and preparation are very important in that respect. No, that's a great point. And, and you're right. I think that sometimes we get overwhelmed. And, and, and I think that the, the objective is we can have a list of things that we want to do and accomplish. Um, but again, being realistic, maybe setting ourselves for smaller goals and just, you know, scratching it off and say, oh, look, I completed such a thing. Maybe I can go for the next goal. And just keep pushing yourself forward and, 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 and harder, really. Because sometimes I think as human um, you know, our, our tendency is to always look for the comfort zone, what we are familiar with. And when we've been pulled to something that is unknown to us, it kind of bothers us, you know, it kind of makes us feel like we're not good enough. Well, Liz, I mean, you hit the nail right on the head there because that gets into the decision-making process, which I addressed in the book. And when people make decisions or make bad decisions, they're good decisions, and bad decisions. That's the truth. But decision, decisions should not be based out of fear, caution, or lack of confidence. The only way that you're going to grow is to stretch yourself and get out of your comfort zone. Because if you're comfortable right now and you think things are going great, trust me, that's going to change. You know, okay? right. That is going to change. Okay. Yeah. So you have to get out of your comfort zone. Okay. And if you are you know, fearful, uh, you know, I mean, you have to accept that sometimes failure does happen. As Winston Churchill said, never, ever, never give up. You fail, you pick yourself up, and you go right back at it again. Keep going. And if you lack, and if you lack confidence in yourself, there's something you can do about it. Develop your skill sets in those areas where you think you are deficient and not lacking. Now, you, other people will help you with that. You can talk to your friend, your spouse, whatever. I mean, there are different venues. There's online training. Plenty. The company you have those training. 
but the opportunities are out there. But if you just sit there and wait for something to happen and wait for things to get better, it's going to be a very, very long wait. It's not going to happen. That's right. It's no, it's not going to happen. It's, it's, I mean, we can wish and hope, as we say, right? And, and we can, and another thing I wanted to bring up, if you don't mind touching uh, briefly on this, uh, Fred, uh, taking action, right? Because we, we talk about goals, we can write them down. Uh, I don't care whether you use your smartphone and you record, you know, your goals. Some people like the audio, whatever works for you, okay? Because mm -hmm. we're all different. I mean, that's the reality mm -hmm. as it is, you know, and, and we are unique, but we have, different ways of learning and getting to habits, whatever you seem to work for you, put it into place, make it into a daily habit. But especially, uh, you know, books like yours is something that can be so helpful, you know, for, for, for the entrepreneurs, because a lot of times, well, we're in a lot of solitude, right? Even if mm -hmm. we have corners, it doesn't matter. There's times where we have to spend hours by ourselves and we have to make such tough decisions. And like you said, decisions could be good, could be bad but we need to learn as we go and what better to reach out to people like you who have been able to experiment and have a little techniques that you know they're giving results and that's what matters you know because we all here to learn from each other that's what it really mm -hmm. comes down to um so your book again how can um before we wrap up please fred how can people uh Go in and, and, and reach out to you, your website, please, your contact information, along with where can they purchase your book, please? Okay. Uh, the website is called it starts with you .net. It starts with you, Y O U dot net. And on the website, I mean, there's a little information about myself. There's also uh, a link to the Amazon reviews, which have all been uh, nice so far. There's also a, you can read the preface to the book. It's on there. You can, you can read it and you can also read the chapter on adversity. Oh, great. So Liz, let's say you're having a bad day. Just go to my website and read the chapter on adversity. But, uh, you know, yeah. and then they can, uh, and there's some uh, you know, other information on there. There are links to the various sites where they can, you know, purchase the book. But, uh, you know, it'll get them a feel for whether or not it's something they might be interested in. But I, you know, I would, I would hope they, they would be because, you know, anybody that wants, anybody that wants to be successful has to develop the mindset yeah. and the habit. And it's also very useful. And this is what, what my readers have told me so far. They, they use it as a reference manual because at the end of the day, it's about the fundamentals. And you, you know why the fundamentals sometimes don't get followed because it's easy to forget. So if, it's good for refreshing for a refresher manual sometimes but anyhow that's the information Liz. thank you so much fred i, I really am I'm, I'm grateful for all the you know um information you have shared with us and, and like i said you know my my best intentions every time that i bring an expert like yourself is, is to help out audience uh, because i think there's so many things that we still need to learn to improve ourselves and especially to continue delivering better service to 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 our clients um, mm -hmm. more we know the better it is, but also what makes more powerful is not the knowledge, is how to implement it and taking actions. And these are things that we can learn from others like yourself. So once again, Fred, thank you, like I said, for, for being part of our show. It's been an amazing well, experience. Uh, I've enjoyed it very much, Liz, and uh, feel free to call again. Thank you very much. And what we're going to do, we're going to put your contact information for all those who are listening or watching through our YouTube channel. Uh, we are going to put Fred's contact information, his website, and I believe the free chapter he's, he's allowing everyone to download. Is that correct, Fred? Uh, correct. And then I will, uh, I'll put your podcast on there too. Excellent. Beautiful. Well, once again, uh, thank you for your time. And to all my audience, as always, uh, like, share, and comment. And if you have any questions uh, for Fred, by all means, feel free through, you know, the YouTube channel to go ahead and post it there. And I'd be happy to pass it on to Fred. And, uh, and like I said, reach out to him. He's there to help all of you. So thank you.